Welcome to Illidan Lab. My name is Nick. I am one of the design team. And in this video, I'm going to be talking through the character class and specialist classes of fighter and specialist classes of warrior, paladin, tradesperson and barbarian. Now, as I've mentioned in the character creation class, every character has a base class and then chooses one of the four specialist classes that goes with that base class to help flesh them out. The reason we designed it like this is your base class will give you access to a good range of general adventuring skills. You're a fighter, you know how to fight. You're a rogue, you know how to hide and sneak around. You're a cleric, you know some priesty stuff and some spells. You're a mage, you know some basic spells and lore to go with it. In this video, I'm going to be talking through the fighter base class and the fighter base class skills are body development, fighter power, great weapon mastery, intimidate, long weapon mastery, shield mastery, sword, short weapon mastery and strong willed. So I'll go through these at pace. You can read about them in the rule book, which is there on the website. First of all, body development. In combat, your body is divided up into different locations. We don't use the head uh, as a location in fighting for safety reasons, but you have your torso, you have both limbs, uh, both arms, and you have both legs. You start out, everyone starts out, with just one hit point on each location. So if you get a hit on your arm, that arm cannot be used anymore. If you get a hit on your torso, you lie down, you're unconscious, coughing up blood. Body development gives you one extra hit point per location for each level that you have. So by buying that at the basic level for three XP, you have apprentice level body development, you then are able to have two hits per location. Very useful. Someone hits you, you can keep fighting. The next skill we have is fighter power. This one's very simple. Lots of skills require power points in order to give an in-game effect. You gain power points by buying skills with power in the title and all fighters have an access to fighter power. Each level gives you five power points. Great weapon mastery. If you want to use a great weapon, something uh, longer than 42 inches, that's the total length. So from the very tip of sword right through to the end of the handle, if it's over 42 inches, that's a great weapon. You need this skill to use it. At apprentice level, you can also use great weapons to call double when you hit. So it does two points of damage instead of one, and that costs one power point. You get more effects as you go up uh, to become an expert, master or grandmaster in that skill and they cost more power points right up to critical blow as a grandmaster which will drop all sorts of things. It costs eight power points but by the time you're a grandmaster you'll have power points to burn and you want to show off a, fu a funky critical so that's what you can do. The next fighter skill is intimidate. This might look a little bit like magic, but it isn't. It's just the fact you're a fighter, you're big and you're strong and you're commanding and you can give people orders and they tend to obey. So at apprentice level, you can issue the command intimidate one, stop. And the target is compelled to briefly stop what they're doing. That costs you one power point. And as you increase in power, you get more and more effects. As a grandmaster, you can call out mass fear for eight power points. And everyone in an arc of your arms that you put out, who hears you call that, are so terrified by your shouting, they're gonna run. You are one scary fighter. Next up is Long Weapon Mastery. That's for all weapons between 18 and 42 inches in length. It allows you to do special calls with those weapons. Anyone can use them, but only if you've got this skill can you do uh, special calls with them. At Apprentice level, again, one power point allows one hit to do uh, a point of double damage. Next skill for the fighter is Shield Mastery. You want to use a shield? Um, you need to use one of these. Well, actually you don't. A small shield, anyone can use. But if you want to use a large shield, like the one up behind me, where its longest dimension is over 24 inches, you need apprentice level shield mastery. And because you're used to fighting with a shield, as this skill increases, 
so you gain extra benefits with it. For example, at expert, you're so used to carrying one of these heavy things around, you're a bit more tank. And that means you have um, an extra one hit per location while you're carrying a shield. So if you get body development and shield mastery, both up to expert, you're starting to get really, really solid. Next fighter skill is short weapon mastery. And for this, it's like the others, uh, long weapon and great weapon. Uh, but this is what you use though for a weapon that's under 18 inches in total, so probably a dagger. At apprentice level though, your weapon call is through. That means if you hit with your short weapon and someone is wearing armor and you spend one power point and call through, it ignores the armor, it hits the person underneath. This can be quite useful. If someone's got five points of armor, but only one point of uh, body underneath and you hit and you go through the armor, you ignore all those five points, you go straight through and that damage goes on the individual. It's particularly useful if you're using something like poison because normally poison would just uh, hit the armor and do no effect. But if you get through and get poison into the body of your target, they take the poison damage as well. I hope I'm not giving you too many evil ideas. The final general skill for the fighter is strong willed. And this just means that you have uh, a real toughness of mind. You have been trained hard and you can cope with all sorts of things. So at apprentice level, you can resist one mind affecting effect per refresh. I'll just explain what a refresh is in our system. And I'll do a video about our food system. Yes, a LARP with a food system. You can once per 24 hour period sit down if you can get in game a meal maybe you go out and hunt it maybe you're a cook uh, maybe you trade for one if you sit down and eat a meal and you take half an hour over doing that and you rest you are then refreshed all of your hit points all of your power points and all of your skills that say so many times per refresh are then reset okay and once you've had that refresh you have to wait a full 24 hours before you can sit down and have another meal and have that effect. So that's what a refresh is. You can resist one mind effect, uh, such as someone casting a command spell or fear happening on you. So you imagine your party walks up and the death knight casts mass fear at you. Everyone else runs away, but you want to fight this guy. You just go resist no effect and get in and hack him to pieces best of luck with that one. And there are uh, other effects of what you can do with strong willed as you go up levels. Well, that's the list of eight skills that all fighters have, but then you have to choose a specialist class. So I'm going to talk through the four specialist classes now to finish off this video. So next we have the warrior. The warrior is designed to be uh, a fighter's fighter, a specialist across even more in-depth fighting skills, more weapons, more armor, more defense, um, but also has some skills to lead in battle. So the skills are, first of all, is craft military equipment. This is, allows uh, your warrior character, if they have the tools and the materials, to make weapons and armor, either for yourself, for others, or as trade goods to get you some extra money. Part of the crafting system which is integral to how Illidan works. The next warrior skill is defensive combat. This allows you to spend your power points on resisting damage. So at apprentice level you can resist a double or a through blow for one point. So someone hits you with a double and it would take you down. You can count resist. It becomes just an ordinary single point of damage. The next warrior skill is leadership. I love this one. You are an inspiring leader and once per refresh, you can make a speech which affects all allies who hear the speech. You can give this speech before a big epic battle. You can give this speech afterwards to try and rally the troops. You can give this speech during a particularly long battle if they need it. Your speech needs to be at least a minute. And at apprentice, it gives a small effect to everyone who's listening. So at apprentice level, your war speech 
restores one power point to all allies who listen. At higher levels, it will repair damage on their armor. It will restore hit points, even if they're unconscious. At the very top level, it gives them immunity to the next blow that would hurt them. So fired up are they by what the words you've got to say. So if you have always wanted to do one of those um, great Lord of the Rings style speeches before a battle, become a warrior, get leadership, stand in front of everyone and start talking about it being a red day and a sword day. Next um, skill is tactician. This is another great one about warriors being war leaders. It allows you to call a time freeze during a battle, which means all the crew and all of your allies close their eyes and you have 10 seconds to sit and be aware of what's going on around you. You can also give instructions during that time so that your allies know what's happening. So you're running into a battle, you can call a quick time freeze, you can assess what's going on and shout, elf over there, take the archer in that tree down. Uh, dwarf on my flank, make sure you get onto the troll. Time comes back in. And as tactician goes up in levels, you can start doing other things. You can move your allies around so suddenly you can move a number of your allies and when time comes back in you've got people who've moved quickly onto the flanks of your enemy it's quite a good thing you can also use the time freeze in non-combat situations if you wish um, you only have one per refresh use it well but let's say you're having to solve some puzzle and uh, you've got a roof collapsing on you you can cause a time freeze to get you a little bit of extra time to figure it out. Anyway, I'll leave you to think up creative ways of what you could do in a short time freeze as a player. Next warrior skill is thrown weapon mastery. This is just extending the range of weapons with which a warrior can be skilled. So you can use uh, throwing weapons um, and issue special calls with them. So at first level, you can cast through with throwing weapons. Next skill for warriors is two weapon mastery. You're ambidextrous. You can fight with a weapon in each hand and it starts off with it being a short weapon in your off hand. Um, and then it means uh, at expert level, it can be a long weapon up to 42 inches in your off hand as well as in your main hand. The seventh skill for warriors is warrior armor mastery. Uh, armor mastery skills determine what sort of armor your character can wear. Normally it defines uh, which of the three classes of armor you can wear, light, medium or heavy. And uh, if you had, say, a heavy armor, a character with heavy armor mastery, you can wear light, medium or heavy, anything up to heavy. If you had light armor mastery, you would only be able to wear the light armor. Warriors are, warriors are special. Warriors can wear um, any type of armor and also be able to repair armor. When they get to expert level, they can stack two types of armor, which must be different, and they get the benefits of both. So if you're an expert with warrior armor mastery, you can have heavy armor and underneath it wear medium armor. So maybe something like... Um, you know, some sort of heavy leather armor and underneath your on top of that, rather, you've got some plate mail. You would then have three points extra from the heavy armor and an extra two points from the medium armor. That's five points of armor between the bad guys and the squishy warrior that lies inside. So warrior armor mastery is really cool. Final skill, warriors also have their own uh, source of gaining power points, which is warrior power, which like fighter power gives you five power points per um, level of it. So when you're creating your character, you could say, I want to have great weapon use so I can use a great weapon and every power point I spend on it where well, I can do a point of double damage and I will have fighter power from the fighter base list, which gives me five um, power points and warrior power from the warrior list, which gives me another five points. So you've got 10 power points, 10 times per refresh. You can do double with your greatsword. You are still a one point 
per location and you can't wear any armor so you're a bit of a glass cannon but if you want to design your character that way you go for it okay next specialist class number two is the paladin the paladin is the holy knight it's kind of a priest uh, fighter hybrid access to all eight fighter skills so you've got a good solid base of um of offensive and defensive combat skills but let's have a look at what the paladin does first skill for the paladin is the healing trance this is something so that um once per event you can knock if you're knocked down at the end of your death count you are healed to a minimum of one per location your god has decided they don't want you in their heaven just yet they will heal you so you can keep fighting and your healing trance once per event gets better as um, the skill increases second skill for paladins is heavy armor use so uh, you can wear light medium or heavy armor only one set you're not a warrior after all and you can um, repair those and as you get better at that you get better at repairing them you gain extra hit points and so forth the next paladin skill lay on hands this allows you to heal people through the power of your deity once per refresh so you can use this skill to heal once per person per refresh and it takes 30 seconds of contact to take effect and at apprentice level this heals one hit point so once per refresh you can heal all the players for one hit point by laying on hands for 30 seconds but once they've had one point of healing from you you have to wait till the refresh before you can do it again that means you can do a little bit of healing across a lot of people the lay on hands effect increases every time you upgrade that skill the next skill is paladin law law spelt l-o-r-e now any skill which has law l-o-r-e in it is to do with casting spells so the paladin has a little tiny bit of spell casting and at each level you get a spell which costs a certain amount of power points to give its effect at apprentice level you can cast the first level spell of revive this is a touch spell and when a target who is unconscious they have to be unconscious when you cast it on them it heals one hit point of damage so this is good emergency healing to get an unconscious person back and moving but no more beyond that you get other spells within the paladin genre above that so at expert level you can repair armor literally in the middle of a fight you can cast repair armor on your heavy armor and suddenly your breastplate is fixed at third level you can cast question of truth which is about getting information out of people and so forth uh, grandmaster should you ever get there it's mass heal you can heal every one of your allies within earshot grandmaster skills are cool next skill paladin power that's another source of power points for you so you can combine that with fighter power to have all the power points you need for your weapon skills but also for any spells you use off the paladin lore list the next skill for paladins is read scroll this is quite a common one among spell casters if you come across a magic scroll that's written down you can read it reading it releases a spell that's been put into that parchment into that scroll and its magical effects then happen um, that destroys the scroll now the good thing with this is you're not just restricted to spells from the paladin spell list from paladin law you can do any spell scroll you come across as long as your um, skill for reading scroll is strong enough so if you've got read scroll at apprentice level you can cast any any first level scroll that you come across if you're an expert you can cast scrolls inscribed with any second level spell if you can team up with someone who can write scrolls and cast spells into them you can get some interesting effects you can get something like invisibility and cast it on yourself as a paladin sneak up on your enemies you appear as soon as you fight them but you can have that spell on yourself scrolls are a very clever way of transferring spells from one class for a one-shot use by another class so um have a look through all the spells and let your imagination go wild as to what you can do with those uh seventh paladin skill is smite 
this gives you a special weapon call uh, which you can use against any target of a specific chosen race. There are five races in the book that you can go for, Fey, Tyron, Sylvan, Undead or Demon. And you can look a little bit more in the background in the rule book about those different races if you wish. Now, at apprentice level, when you use the combat call smite, insert name of race, so let's say you have chosen and you are fixed for the lifetime of that character to go after, say, undead. If you go smite undead, it costs two power points, but it does three damage. At expert level, it uh, costs one power point to do that smite. So if the undead come up, you're going to be hitting them for three points every single time. A smite does three damage. At master level, you can get the skill of smite combat, which means for up to five minutes, you can, once you've paid the smite combat, all of your attacks have the smite call against your favoured enemy. Um, so yes, yeah, smite is pretty cool. I'm looking forward one day to seeing a paladin using a smite combat against hordes of their enemy. That's going to be cool. Final paladin skill is turn undead. This allows you to bring forth holy energy to repel undead creatures in the name of your deity. At apprentice level, once per refresh, it's one minor undead. When you're turning them, this will um, drive them away. They won't come near you, but it doesn't destroy them. At expert level, your call is um, turn all undead. So you're standing there, turn in the name of whatever your name of deity is, I, I turn undead. All minor undead will move away from you and increases from that master level. It's turn all undead. Even the big griblies are going to keep away from you. And uh, yeah, a grandmaster, you can start to banish undead as well. So that's kind of cool. That gives you a flavor of the paladin. Lots of holy stuff going on there. A bit of magic, a bit of smiting, a bit of protecting others. Next, we're going to have a look at the tradesperson. And the tradesperson specializes in the craft system. They've already got all of the access to all eight fighter skills. So you can build someone who's pretty handy in a fight. Maybe not a fully tanked up warrior, but still, if you're in a combat, tradesmen can hold their own. First skill is artisan. You're skilled in all sorts of trades and you can make just about anything to a high standard so any sort of mundane item whether it's weapons whether it's armor whether it's uh, jewelry whether it's clothing there's a crafting guide on the website the artisan can make loads of things from there you can really do well with that the next skill is builder this is a really useful skill for building two sorts of things the first one is you can build in-game temporary um, upgrades. So let's say you want to build a cooking station or a forge. A builder can actually do that. They get a bit of timber, they put it together. You then have a marker in your camp that anyone can use, or at least anyone you say can use if you build it in your tent. Um, anyone can use that for a skill that requires a cooking station or a forge or a first aid station or whatever. Um, you can also use your skills if you get resources to create downtime buildings. The philosophy behind Illidan is you're being sent to this new island. There is no civilization there as far as you're aware. You're going to be building a new world. So you start out by building a homestead. Once you've built that, that gives you a little bit of status in the game. That'll give you the title of Alderman in the game. Once you've got a homestead, you can start building, let's say, a farm or a hamlet. You could build an orchard. You could build a tavern. By building these things, it takes quite a lot of resources and time in game. But if you can gather them, you can do them. When you start an event, if you've got, let's say you've got a hamlet, you will start with some extra gold from taxation every event. So building is a good long term development and it also gives a lot of flavor to your character in the game. Third skill for, build, for tradespeople is a chef. This means you can make meals within the game. Meals that will allow people to refresh their skills and you can craft special meals that not only allow them to refresh, but also to expend experience points. 
Next skill is light armor use. A tradesperson, while they are a fighter, the heaviest armor they will wear will be light armor, something like padded armor, which will give one extra hit point per location which is armored. The next tradesperson skill is merchant. This is cool. You are able to buy and sell goods through a ref at a fixed price. The exchange may take some time to work, but you're good at shifting stuff. Or maybe you, someone says, I need to get hold of some timber. Can you sort that for me? And you look and you say, yeah, I can get timber for, for you for all 15 gold per unit. And you know you can go to the ref and through your trade contact, get it a bit cheaper, make yourself a bit of cash. Next skill for the merchant is uh, missile weapon mastery. So merchants are able to use bows if they wish. The next skill after that is surgeon. This takes the general first aid skill, but takes it a bit further. So you're able to do mundane healing, bandaging people up to heal them, splinting broken limbs, using poultices so that other bandaging has greater effects. At Grand Master level, you can do surgical interventions to cure disease and cure insanity. I look forward to Grand Master surgeons drilling holes in people's head to cure them of the horrors they've seen. Final skill for the tradesperson is survivalist. Survivalist is a skill for those who are used to going out in the wilderness and it allows you to find and prepare food just about anywhere. So you can gather ingredients and you can make things called snacks. Snacks are part of the food system. They're a bit like potions. They give you a one-off benefit. It doesn't work like a meal which fully refreshes you, but let's say you find a bit of meat and you turn that into a snack, you can use that to give you a bit of extra um, hit points or other snacks might give you other effects like restoring some power points or allowing you to hide. So that's a little extra of the crafting system as if the tradesperson didn't have enough. And the next skill is, uh, not next skill, the next class is the Barbarian. This is the fourth and final of the specialist classes and the barbarian is your super tough um, get out in the wilderness can survive anything fighter type usually from fairly low tech backgrounds but they have incredible skills of they're tough they're survivable uh, you will see when you see the skills so the first skill that they have is barbarian power barbarian power gives them an extra five points per level a bit like the same for paladin and uh, warrior. Note that tradesperson doesn't have a tradesperson power thing, but they don't have so many skills involving spend power points to do X. The next barbarian power is rage. And um, you can rage once per refresh, which up to five minutes gives you, uh, you know, you just fly into a fury. And uh, at apprentice level, while you're raging, all your blows can be called as double hits for free. And as your rage increases, so the power of the rage gets better. So at expert level, any damage calls received on you just count as a single hit. So someone hits you with a double, with a crush, with uh, even a critical. You're so angry and fighting. It's like a small wound to you. You just just ride through those. Next skill for the Barbarian is resistances. You're tough. Once per refresh at apprentice level, you can resist one poison and just ignore the effect of that poison. You've probably eaten some funny things in your time. As that increases, so you end up being able to resist disease. Also uh, completely immune to disease at expert level. At master level, once per refresh, you can resist magic and ignore the effects of one spell. The next skill is for barbarians is survivalist. This is the same as the tradesperson. You can gather food, you can gather strange meats while you're out in the wild if you find them, and you can use those to prepare snacks for yourself. And also a little bit of meals, but not, not super good meals, but enough to refresh. Next skill for barbarians, thrown weapon mastery. So uh, like the um, warrior, you can use throwing weapons and do weapon calls with those. 
Next up, two weapon mastery. Again, we've gone through that in the warrior. That's using two weapons in combat. Seeing barbarians with two weapons raging is just fantastic. They just carve everything up. And uh, just two more skills to go. The next one is unarmored prowess, which allows you to have uh, one extra hit point per location. If you can have body development and unarmored prowess, they stack. So you could start the game with body development and unarmored prowess at apprentice level. That gives you, you have your one starting hit point, you get an extra one from body development and an extra one from unarmored prowess, three hit points per location, you're solid. But you have to be, because barbarians don't wear armor. And the final thing that they wear is uh, war paint. Your final skill is war paint. And um, with that, you are able to use your power points to put uh, markings, uh, temporary markings upon yourself. And you get a different marking that you can cast. It's a little bit magic-y, but it's not because they're barbarians. They don't do magic. And uh, at apprentice level, you can paint a symbol of resilience on a character, either yourself or another. It costs one power point, and this gives one temporary hit point on that location, which is the first hit point that takes damage. So you can paint yourself with these for extra strength and extra um, powerful symbols as you go up with that. So that's the Barbarian. That's the final specialist class under the uh, fighters. I hope that's given you a good understanding of the four different expressions of fighter through the different specialist classes and all the different skills that they have. And maybe you're now thinking what sort of character you're wanting to build within the fighter system. I hope you have found that interesting. It's given you an insight into how the game works and how the some of the mechanics work. And uh, look, do look out for other videos describing the other classes and mechanics and other things that happen in Illidan LARP. But otherwise, I hope I see you soon at a LARP event and I hope we get to do some adventuring together.